Hello, class. I see that my, I always check to make sure my microphone's working because God, wouldn't that be horrible if I did this and then my microphone wasn't working the entire time. That wouldn't be good. Um, I actually have uh, just about everything working. This is my third lecture of the day. I love teaching engineering mechanics. I taught uh, engineering mechanics at Purdue uh, when I first started as a professor before I went over to um, Australia. And then I taught uh, engineering mechanics uh, out of the physics department because a lot of the, the more theoretical things are taught out of the physics department in Australia and Britain. Uh, even though you're you know, doing engineering, your thermodynamics, your fluid mechanics, those are all taught out of the physics department. Um, which, you know, there are, there are arguments both ways. Anyway, <clears throat> let's get back to this because I wanted to uh, now start to extend into a little more difficult problems that are now starting to use a little more diff uh, you know, difficult understanding of phenomena that we're going to start to uh, move into uh, for our, uh, like we're gonna be doing a free body diagram, a 3D free body diagram uh, today, and an example of that. And I also want to look at frictional forces, and, uh, and I, I wanna do two problems that sort of uh, exemplify uh, those two things. And so I've got, a ladder here. Let's say that I've got a ladder and it's up against a building. Now, uh, I won't say this is drawn to scale. <laughs> so, uh, you know, don't hold me as to this is exactly 60 degrees, but uh, I'm going to say that that angle there is 60 degrees and I better get a better uh, marker right? I've got a couple markers here. We'll see which one's the best. And I want to give you uh, some um, characteristics of that. This is going to be 15 meters. Uh, that's supposed to be a five. I'm not very good with fives. 15 meters uh, long. So that's the really the hypotenuse of our triangle, if you think about it. And so then what we want to do is we also want to find out what these distances here are because we're going to use those in the distance vectors of the solution to this problem. Uh, and we're also going to have some forces here. Now, down here, if this ladder is not going to slip, I mean, if this is an ice down here, then we're going to have some type of normal force working against the weight force, right? And the weight force is going to be right in the middle of the ladder, right? That's going to be my weight of the ladder. And then up here, we're going to be pushing against the wall. Now, I'm going to draw this negative. I'm going to draw that negative, but I'm going to specify that and everything in... Uh, um, you know, my summation, because I want to point out that, you know, it doesn't really matter as long as you keep everything uh, correct <laughs> in your accounting of your vectors, uh, you, you, you'll figure it out. So this pushing back here, I'm going to say that this is point B, so this would be BX, but it's pointing in the negative direction, okay, 15 meters long, uh, I've got a normal force here, but then I've also got this other force here, which I'm going to call my frictional force, F sub R. Uh, that's a standard notation for frictional forces. I don't know why it should be F sub F or something, but it's F sub R usually. So that's my frictional force, and we're going to try and find out what the frictional coefficient of that floor has to be for that ladder to stand up at that angle, 60 degrees, and lean against that wall, a 15 meter long ladder, right? So we want to find out what these distances are anyway. So let's write these in. What's this distance here? I think everybody knows that's going to be 13 meters, right? Actually, it's 12.99 meters, but I'm going to round it off to 13 meters. And, uh, you know, the distance uh, between here and here 
would be uh, one half of 15 meters, right? Because the uh, cosine of 60 is one half. So this would be 7.5 meters. Again, not good with the fives. So uh, that's a point, 7.5 meters, and that's the distance between those. And let's not forget this normal force and my frictional force, right? Should I circle those with red? Of course, all the colorblind students uh, see this as brown. So, you know, <laughs> it's, uh, and amazingly, two of my best friends that are electrical engineers are totally colorblind. Isn't that amazing? They're great electrical engineers, by the way, but when we, I, I was hardwiring a stereo into one of the cars, I could not tell the difference between bright red and bright uh, green. Uh, that's why you have to have somebody help you, I guess. <laughs> now, this is one problem that we want to look at, and the new thing in this problem is really our frictional forces that we're going to have here, and we're going to have to, you know, figure out what our weight force is. And I'm going to give you some other characteristics of the problem. I haven't given you all of the, uh, you know, information. The mass of the ladder is 30 kilograms, right? So the mass of the ladder is 30 kilograms. We can easily figure out what the weight of the ladder is. Why don't we do that over here? So the weight of the ladder is just going to be the mass of the ladder times the gravitational constant. 30 kilograms times 9.81. I'll actually write it out. 30 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared is going to give us 294 newtons. All right, so 294 newtons, and we know where that's placed, and we know where this force here is placed too, don't we? And we know where this point is. I'm going to call this point down here. If that's point B, I'll call this point A. Does everyone see that A there? Okay, don't get it confused with the 60 degrees or with the W, which is my weight force. So now, let's look at the, uh, you know, the, the distances that we have here, because I'm going to keep my Cartesian coordinate system based on, I'm gonna use green for this, I'm gonna keep my co uh, 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 coordinate system based on, you know, the, the standard vertical, uh, horizontal, this being my X, uh, this being my y, and then looking at both the forces and the distances uh, using that type of Cartesian coordinate uh, system, transformed in this way or, or, or established in this way. All right? So I'm not going to twist anything around here. I'm just going to standard use that one. And let's just figure out what our distance vectors are and our force vectors are, and that'll be great. So when we look at B of X, if I'm actually going to look at uh, B, and I'm, I'll write this out. This is going to be minus B of X, right? I hat plus zero J hat. All right. I think everybody can see that, Newton's. Uh, I could put uh, parentheses around here if I wanted to. So minus B sub X, because uh, I've drawn it in the negative direction, but it's, so I put a minus B sub X there instead of B sub X if I had drawn it in the positive direction. Uh, but we'll just see, and I think that it, this B sub X will come out positive, and then we'll know that it is drawn in the negative direction. And yes, I did draw it in the correct direction. <laughs> I think everybody sees it's going to be in that direction, obviously. that's a, We all have intuitive understanding of ladders. And we know that the ladder leans against the house <laughs> and that the ladder doesn't slip out on the bottom because of frictional forces that are on the bottom of the ladder, right? So we're just working on a problem that's pretty realistic. Actually, a 15 meter ladder, hopefully nowadays, uh, isn't 30 kilograms, but uh, I have a 30 kilogram, uh, at least that, probably larger than that, it's made out of wood. All right, let's go. Um, uh, back to this. So now we've got B all written down there. And um, we can see that uh, the uh, weight force here is going to be working down as well. So 
I can write my weight force if I wanted to in a vector as uh, um, zero i hat, right, minus 294 newtons j hat. Well, I guess, my God, I threw the Newton. There we go. I can just throw it up like that. There, the parentheses are perfectly correct then. All right, so we've got our weight force uh, and we've got uh, our, our force up there, our, our force at B. Um, and then we've got the, the forces down here too. So we can really already, I mean, even before we do all of these forces, why don't we sum the forces in the X direction and the Y direction? So summing the forces in the X direction equal to zero. I'm going to have uh, um, F sub R. Uh, and if I had to write out F sub R, let's write that out in vector form. F sub R is pushing in that direction. So it's going to be uh, F sub R X I hat and then plus <clears throat> zero J hat Newtons. All right. Okay, and um, let's see, what else do we have? We got the weight force, that force, we've got the, the normal force. So the normal force, which is gonna be pushing up uh, in the uh, Y direction or the vertical direction is going to be equal to zero I hat plus N sub Y um, Newtons. Oh, I forgot the J hat, sorry about that. Okay, so those are our four forces that are really this, 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 and I should have taken the red pen and circled the uh, weight force in the, in the center. Those are our four forces. So, we, we, we're gonna sum up our forces in the X direction. Let's just look here. So I've got minus B, minus B sub X, zero, zero, and then plus F sub R X. That equals zero. So we know that uh, F sub R X equals B, sub x. And of course that's true and of course it's true because I've drawn b sub x in the negative direction, right? In the negative direction and I've chosen it in that direction. I had to keep it in that direction. If I had drawn this in the positive direction like I usually do all the time and that's the habit I would let I, I would tell you to get into, even though you know it's leaning against the house, draw it positive and then it'll come out negative. Everything's fine. But I just, I, I just did it so that I, I'm showing you, if you keep the book work correct, everything still works out fine. We just know that B of X now, which is a magnitude, is going to be in the negative direction. All right, because we've got B, uh, the, the two-dimensional vector notation for B right here, right? Okay, so we've got those. Now we can also sum the forces in the Y direction equal to zero. Well, that's a zero, that's a zero, so we don't have to worry about that. And then we've got uh, minus 294 and plus N sub Y. So uh, N sub Y minus 294 Newtons, and that just tells us that N sub Y equals 294 Newtons. So we now know what N is. We can just write that in there. So we know N equals uh, zero, I hat plus 294 uh, J hat Newtons. I'm gonna put Newtons out there at the very end. I think everybody can still see it. So we know what N is. That's one thing taken care of. Do we know what anything else is? Well, we don't know F sub R and B sub X. We haven't got B sub X yet uh, or F sub R yet, so we can't really do that, but we've got <coughs> N. And we know what, uh, what, what W is, of course. Uh, we figured that out in the very beginning, and that wasn't really even part of the problem. We had to do that to solve the problem. <laughs> but now what I want to do is I want to get rid 
of some of the unknowns. We know what this is. We know what this is. We don't know what this is. And we don't know what this is, right? So we have to choose one of those two locations to some moments about. Which location should it be? Should it be B or should it be A? That's a good question, isn't it? No, it's not a good question. It's, <laughs> it's a very easy question because A is going to take out two of our, I mean, this is one that we know, yes, but it's going to take out two of our forces, right? The only forces we have to worry about are W and B of X. And so we only have one unknown in there. We know the distances to all of these things. Let's write out a couple distance vectors uh, while we're here. <clears throat> so if we wanted a distance vector from A to the weight force, what would that be? Well, it would be one half of 7.5, right? Because we're at one half the distance in the height and we're at one half the distance in the width because it's right at the center of gravity right at the center of gravity of the ladder, which would be halfway up and halfway over. So our AW is going to be 3.75 meters I hat. I'll put the meters in both of them. And then uh, 13, well, that's 6.5, isn't it? So it's plus 6.5 meters J hat. So that's the, our, let's, let's uh, just block that out for a second so that we can use that in just a second. <clears throat> so that's the distance vector to the uh, weight vector. And then B of X, or really B, which is what we're looking to up here. I should put arrows above those uh, all. I think I did over here. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, well, that's the, the weight, it's not the vector. So uh, that's the scalar, this is the vector. All right, so we've got those. And now what I wanna do is I wanna find the distance from A to B. And I think everybody can see that's just twice that, 7.5 meters I hat plus 13 meters J hat, right? So there you go. We have our two distance vectors. We have, our individual um, <clears throat> vector notation for all of our um, uh, forces that are working on the ladder, right? Okay, all we have to do is put those two together to find the moments about A. There's only two moments, the weight force and the force at B. Let's uh, do that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So the sum of the moments about A equal to zero are going to be this weight force here, right? So we need the distance to the weight force. So uh, um, I'll write it out, uh, R sub A W crossed, right? Did I forget my, those are vectors. R sub A W crossed with W plus, I'll put some parentheses around that, plus uh, R sub A B crossed with B, right? And that's got to equal zero. So, so let's do those two cross products. They're not very hard. We're working in two dimensions. I think I, everybody can see that it's pretty straightforward, actually. So uh, R sub A W crossed with uh, W. So I crossed with J. 3.75 meters. I crossed with minus 294 newtons J. Uh, just a second. That gives me 1,029, right? Now, what will that be? That'll be I cross J, so that gives me K. Should I draw that? Sure, why not? I hat, J hat, K hat. Go in the correct direction and you'll always get positive. So I cross J gives me positive K, but this is a negative. 
So that gives me minus, so summing the moments about A equal to zero equals minus 1,029, uh, I'll call them Newton meters. Uh, you should get used to calling them, uh, and of course that's K hat. Uh, you should get used to calling them joules, but for, for right now, since we're sort of working with moments and everything, Newton meters is probably a, a more appropriate name to use. Uh, just so that you know that you're really dealing with energy, right? And there's conservation of energy <laughs> rules that we always have to think about uh, too. Now let's go on to R sub A, B. R sub A, B is 7.5. Uh, oh, did I do J? J crossed with J? No, of course I didn't. And the same thing here with R sub A, B. It's really just the 7.5, isn't it? So 7.5 I Oh wait, no, that's, here it's the J, <laughs> sorry. So 7.5i crossed with minus b uh, sub xi gives me zero. But when I have the 13 meters crossed with minus b sub x, I get uh, J cross i is minus k, and that's a minus b sub x. So the minuses cancel out. So I get plus 13 meters times B sub X, right? Always trying to keep my positives and negatives uh, correct doing it this way. That's why I don't like to do it. In fact, I'm showing you this way because, uh, you know, you're always thinking that, hey, I should switch that around for some reason. No, no, because you've already drawn it in the wrong direction. <laughs> Always draw it in the positive direction, then you'll never... You'll never forget how you've, how you, where the, what the magnitude is supposed to represent in the future. So you know that that equals zero. You then know that B sub X, um, yeah, is going to equal uh, 1,029 Newton meters K hat. And of course, this is K hat too divided by uh, 13 uh, meters uh, k hat. I think that's right, isn't it? Or, wait, 13 meters uh, j hat. Anyway, so uh, what, what bx is, is going to be, um, uh, well, I'll give it to you in just a second. <laughs> 1029 divided by 13 gives me 79.15. 79.15. And because it's come out positive, right? Because it's come out positive, uh, and of course that would be in the, uh, well, that's B sub X. And we know that it was minus B sub X over here. So if I wanted to write B now, let's go back to this. There's a minus in front of that. Let's not forget that, right? Newton's I hat uh, plus zero Newton's J hat, right? So that's, remember that, that we put the negative there to begin with, we drew it in the wrong direction. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, don't do that. Don't draw it in the wrong direction and then have to remember that coming back here because you're going to forget and you're just going to put 79.15 in and my God, that's, a, that's almost 160 off, isn't it? So always draw it in the positive direction. You won't be wrong. So that's what B, uh, the vector B is. That's what B sub X is. That also tells us now right, because we sum the forces in the x direction that F sub R has got to equal that. So we know that F sub uh, R, if I wanted to write it just going up here, has got to equal um, positive, right, because it's, it's, it's against B sub X, not minus B sub X, which is the minus was over here. So it's the 79.15. So this is going to be 79, positive 79.15 um, Newton's I hat plus zero Newton's J hat, right? And what that brings up is a good uh, thing because 
when we look at the magnitude of the frictional force, and the magnitude of this force is the same as, you know, really the, the, the I. So it's, it's 79. We look at the magnitude of that. What that is, is the coefficient of uh, static friction. Coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Right? The normal force that we have here is 294 newtons, right? 294 newtons. And this is 79.15, right? So uh, what would our coefficient of static friction be? Coefficient of static friction is going to be our uh, frictional force or whatever the frictional force is, the required frictional force divided by our normal force. So that would be 79.15 Newtons divided by 294 Newtons. So this, my coefficient of friction has to be greater or equal to this number. Greater or equal in different materials. For instance, if this was on ice, I can tell you right now that's going to slide. But what if it's a ladder that's on gravel? What if it's a ladder that's on asphalt? What if it's a ladder that's on a wooden deck? Would it slide? We can look at that too, can't we? So what, let, let's just figure out what this has to be. 79.15 divided by 294 is point, wait, is, wait 79.15, is that, is that right? 13, 10, 20, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Wait, I hope I did this right. I'm just looking at <laughs> this thing here. Uh, three, seven, three, seven, uh, and why did I get, it? you know, I think if did I shift it around to a 0.99, 3.75, uh, I'm just looking at, just, just a second, let me check this here for a second. Class, I'm back and I just looked at my notes and I realized that 3.75 times 294 does not work out to 1029. So it works out to 1102. I'm just gonna change a couple little things here. So, uh, sorry, you know, it's just like coming to a class. <laughs> Sometimes things happen. 1102 divided by uh, 13 actually gives me something uh, in the 80s. I'll be right back there with you in just a second. Um, okay, so 1102 divided by 13 is 84.8. 84.8. All right, and then this would be 84.81 Newtons I had. And so that brings us up to here where I guess I've, I also have to put uh, 84.81, 84.81. Yeah, I was, I was looking at it and I looked at my book and I was like, you know, something's not going on. Right here. I don't know. I think I must have multiplied that by 0.5. I, I'm not going to go back right now and just see if that's right, but that's probably what I did. I accidentally multiplied it by 3.5 rather than 3.75, and then I got the, those different numbers. However, let's go back. I even did it here. Uh, let's uh, go back and figure this out again because this is now 80. 4.81, I think it still comes out to the same thing, uh, like 0.288, very close to that. So 84.81 divided by 294 is 2.88. And that's, uh, or 
eight. And so that type of coefficient uh, of friction um, is something that would be greater than like uh, ice or, or whatever, something like that. Uh, you'd have to have, um, I mean, if you're looking at rubber on asphalt, that's about 0. 0.6. But this would be something, even uh, you know, wood on concrete or whatever would be higher than 0. 0.288. And we'll get into that more when we really start discussing um, frictional forces and keep putting those into our analysis, our static uh, equilibrium analysis of um, a variety of problems. We're now getting into friction. We're gonna look at a variety of different things uh, dealing with friction. Then we're gonna get into centroids too. Uh, and into uh, you know the dynamics of of other things, but first we're doing statics. First we've got to get up to speed with statics, and remember that we're really doing three courses in one here: statics, dynamics, and strength of materials. And you're really getting an introduction uh, for a mechanical engineering student. This would take uh, uh, you know three different courses. They'd have one full course in statics, one full course in dynamics, and then one full course in uh, strength of materials. So. I'm trying to give you, uh, you know, a good overview of those three topical areas. Okay, um, I'm gonna stop here, but I want to do, now this is really the frictional forces one. The next uh, lecture I'm gonna do is going to be my 3D uh, free body diagram lecture and uh, really starting to go into forces and forces around axes rather than just forces around points in two dimensions, uh, which are really axes. It's, it's an axis in the Z di the dimension, isn't it? So uh, we're gonna actually draw, um, you know, some, some diagrams that show us where uh, optimal forces should be placed and figure those out and stuff like that. And that's what we're gonna do in the next, using, using three-dimensional moment and force analysis, all right? In the beginning, it'll be simple. And then after that, we're going to get into frictional forces in a much larger way than we did today. All right. Okay, on to the next lecture. <laughs>